We are going to introduce our next guest now. He is a British explorer, an extreme athlete, and he's taken on an incredible challenge. He has traveled the Yangtze River in China, 4,000 mile trek. Uh, it's the third longest river in the world. I mean, this is a mammoth feat that took him 355 days and saw the adventurer threatened by wild animals, uh, sickness and harsh conditions along the way. I mean, that's putting it mildly. He is the first person to ever complete this journey solo. He is Ash Dykes and he is here in the studio now in a nice comfy seat. Put your yeah, feet up. You deserve it, Ash. <laughs> I mean, talk to me, the third longest river in the world yeah. and so many different terrains and different climates to go through right. yeah what an so epic challenge diverse. oh it was wonderful you know in a beautiful place china's got a little bit of every country in one um but yeah you're right started at high altitude minus 20s but then it mixed to a tropical environment and all of the different provinces were like their own different countries you know different sort of environments terrains wildlife food culture so we were really trying to catch that on the international documentary film as we went through so it wasn't 352 days of solid walking i got to take time out to soak up the culture and really try to show that off um, online on my instagram but also with the chinese social handles as well the uptake in China and the support was amazing. We had a hundred at the end. We were live streaming to millions and all the press and media. They were, were there. learning a lot about their they, country. They were as well. shocked, yeah. So it wasn't just the, the the Westerners that I was sharing the stories. It was also the Chinese that were actually shocked with what I was sharing, you know. Uh, but I was also working with the WWF um, to spread more environmental awareness on the ecosystem of the Yangtze River. So that was a big part of it as well. Well, let's talk about the danger. Let's talk bears, wolves, and guns. <laughs> yeah. That was a part of it, yeah. So we were, you know, we were warned by the locals actually that the day uh, before we were in this region, a lady had been attacked and, and killed by a pack of wolves, unfortunately. Um, and we were then followed for the next two days. I say we, it was me and a camera guy. Well, hang on a second, you were warned. Your camera crew were filming the locals, warning you about the woman attacked by wolves. But you didn't find out until That's later right. because yeah. you didn't understand the language. <laughs> yeah. So we were like, oh, it's OK, thank you, bye-bye. And yeah, we find out. And they're going that crazy British man. Yeah, pretty they're, they're, much. They're, that's, I mean, that's, that's a, a bear print, isn't that's it? That's the bear print, Just, just yeah. before that, we saw you fighting off to what, what I thought it would look like bears, but are actually dogs. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So they're big, they're to better mastiffs. They, they protect the local nomads and their gurs away from any bears. They protect the livestock from wolves as well. And they were actually probably more of a threat than the bears and the mm -hmm. wolves, because the bears try to stay away. As long yeah. as you blow your whistle mm -hmm. and you make yourself aware to them, they'll always try to stray away. But the mastiffs, they, yeah, really, they can be brutal. And you touched there on, on the conservation uh, project you were working as you as you went along because you recorded as you followed the river the yeah. levels of plastic pollution that's it that's what it what did you see because we talk about it a lot here on sky news as part of our sky ocean yeah. rescue campaign and we focus on the oceans but of course the mm. third longest river in the world and china as well and their record on pollution what did you find that's it you know and I, I, along the way i was actually using like a water to go filtration bottle so that stopped me from using almost 1400 half liter single use plastics uh, and we were providing these free to schools and we were talking about plastic pollution. But you know, the Yangtze is getting cleaner and cleaner. There's a big awareness now. People are aware of the damage and it's, it's changing fast. They're clear, clearing up the rivers. There's species on the brink of extinction now steadying and they believe in the next few years that the numbers will start to increase. That's like the sturgeon fish uh, and the finless porpoise dolphin. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it is amazing to, to learn more on that side of things. Well, we can look at the moment that you completed your journey. This is your big celebration crossing that finish line. And, you know, there are people running with you, and not all of them, I'm sure, were there along no. the way. They're the glory hunters at the end. Because, <laughs> you know, on day one, you had four members of your team drop out. Yeah, and actually throughout the 16 or 17 people that joined me, there was 10 people who had to abandon the expedition. And that was mainly altitude sickness, injury or fear of wildlife um, and yeah you're right four of those were before we even started the expedition wow. there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes uh, that not a lot of people do see but there's a lot of training and preparation involved I've been doing this now for the past 10 years it's pretty much my career my profession uh, but I think this is still the warm-up still getting started okay oh, well, much more to come Ash thank you so much thank for coming in much. and telling us all about your incredible so expedition uh, Ash Dykes the first person to walk uh, the Yangtze River in China thank you